Hey everybody, Faraz here again today. And today I have another rant video for you. There was a comment on my last video, the Final Fantasy 16 video, the rant, and the comment was asking for a God of War Ragnarok rant. And so for me, I haven't played God of War Ragnarok for a while. The story, everything is not very fresh in my mind and the game itself wasn't very memorable. So what I did is I went back to my past broadcasts on my Twitch channel. I took the VOD, I cut it up, I edited it all together in pieces. So what follows is going to be a very long-winded and sporadic all over the place rant. One other thing to note is that this was recorded on my Twitch channel when I was actively streaming a little bit at least. And I was oftentimes having conversations with my chat. So if I ever refer to someone while I'm talking, I'm referring to the chat I'm talking to. I'm not, I'm not referring to you, the watcher of this video at this moment. So with that, I hope you enjoy. In the future, I will probably be trying to make videos more concise, like the Final Fantasy 16 rant, rather than the God of War, this, this rant right here. Um, but let me know in the comments below which one you prefer. The main reason why I'm so upset is because the story of this game is demonstrably bad in a lot of sections, in major sections. What do I mean by that? They took the characters and they ruined them. They made the characters do things that they wouldn't really do due to continuity, just so that they could move the plot forward. I don't like that. It's not cool. It's like, it's a very big waste. But what bugs me more is that people don't see it. And it's not that it's a difference of opinion, it's that people don't want to see it, which is something I see as a, as a, as a very tragic thing today. People don't want to see what's right in front of them. And so from there, things like this become acceptable. So if this was not acceptable, they wouldn't have done it. But it is acceptable, so they did do it. Just like other games will do the exact same thing because it is, it is acceptable to ruin a story. Just like it is acceptable to make a bad TV show that doesn't make any sense. What was that, uh, that show that came out that people were like, wow, so cool. Uh, the Sandman on Netflix. That was a bad TV show. Yet people were like, oh, it's entertaining. And so there's, there's levels of things. There's levels of continuity. There's levels of depth to things. And there's levels of enjoyment as well. Like, for example, with movies, a lot of people can go to a movie and it's jam-packed with action and they have a good time. And that's great. And they're like, I like that movie, but that was a bad movie. So people can enjoy bad things. That's okay. The problem comes when they say, I like that movie, therefore that was a good movie. For example, I actually like this game, but this is a bad fucking game. The combat's great. The story is a disaster. They ruined it. They took all of God of War 1, they added a sequel, and now that's done. The, what, something that could have been beautiful is gone. It's blown apart. They destroyed it. And why did they destroy it? I don't actually know. It could have been due to financial reasons. It could have been due to incompetence. It could have been due to laziness. It could have been due to so many, uh, so many things. But the bottom line is they had something beautiful in front of them and they decided not to get it. Instead, they decided to throw it away. And that is a sad reality of the world today is so many things that could be amazing and beautiful are just thrown away, just tossed aside because it's convenient to do so, and people let them get away with it. And why do people let them get away with it? I don't actually know. So with God of War, you have a bunch of characters, and they're, they're doing well. Like, they're doing okay. Like, look, Kratos is becoming a dad. That's a good one. Atreus is growing up. That's also a good one, especially after the last game. Freya is dealing with revenge. Great. Thor is dealing with the death of his son and being an alcoholic. Cool. Sif is dealing with, you know, a shitty husband and the death of her children. Okay. You have some very good pieces there to work with. Let's see how they interact. Let's see how things unfold. And so for a little while, that's working. 
Atreus doesn't want Kratos to die. He's going off and trying to do his best, and he's growing up in the process. Kratos wants to protect Atreus, so he's being a little bit overprotective, but he's also learning how to be a good dad and how to watch his son grow up in the process. That's good. Both those are good. Freya is coming to terms with the death of her son and the idea that Kratos and Atreus aren't the enemy. So they clash and they have conflict, but eventually they make up. Okay, also great. So far, so good, right? Oh, and then Odin. You have, of course you have Odin. Odin's this character who really wants to know what happens after death. He is at the top. It's a very, he's very interesting, actually. He's at the top. And for the, you know, the, what are, what are they called? The warriors that he has? Not the Asgardians. Um, the Einherjar. He knows that their souls will just keep cycling and cycling and cycling. They never really die. They just keep fighting, right? Or the giant souls. You know, if Odin doesn't know what's, where he's going to go. And all he has is this one thing. He only has one thing to look into. Everything else is just duty and responsibility and taking care of things or, or, you know, managing Asgard, basically. So he's got this singular goal. Okay. All these characters, how are they going to interact? How are they going to interact? Atreus ends up going to meet Odin. Odin kind of becomes like a father figure, whatever. That's all fine and that's believable. Odin takes someone young away from his father. He's growing up and he stimulates a part of him that is that is not stimulated by the overprotected Kratos. That fits. Okay? That's okay. That fits. And then it starts to fall apart. It all starts to fall apart. Like, big time. And so they've got Frere. And they don't really make him a great character. He's just kind of there. And it's a little bit weird how he, intera how he interacts with his sister. But that's, that's okay. Like, that's still okay. There's small things here and there which are just like, you know, this, oh, it's, I don't feel good about this. But it culminates in the scene where Odin reveals he's tear. There are so many holes and flaws to that point, and all the characters no longer become consistent. They're all just thrown to the wind, and the game becomes a Marvel movie. Even the dialogue lines during combat and uh, during cutscenes like the, the i even said there it's like it's it's, it's a fanfic it's no longer the game it's like you have a 15 year old boy writing a fanfic and it's like what the hell happened to it why did this happen like why would they do this the way i was thinking about it was so you're expecting me to believe that odin mastermind odin the all father the all father of all acer the ruler of asgard the trickster, the one who's so tricky that he can be tear under the noses of this group of gods, very versatile gods, or, 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 or not versatile, very uh, capable and tested gods. He can, he can, he can be so conniving and scheming that he can deceive Mimir and Freya and everybody. He's not a stupid guy. He's a smart guy. And then so Odin gets the mask stolen from him. Fair enough. Fine. Let's say that's that's something that he would have not seen coming. That's fair. So then his plan is to become Tyr again before Atreus goes back. And then from there, he's going to not just scurry away with the mask or not catch anybody by surprise or anything like that not do a convincing okay let me see that real quick i need to confirm something here let me go to my broom closet and disappear or not uh portray a, a what's it called uh basically not have any foolproof plan and instead i'm just going to try and grab the mask and then try and convince them to attack asgard for whatever reason and then I'm going to disappear with the mask. And so in doing that, he gets caught out by Brock, who is one of the best craftsmen in the, all of the realms. 
And from there, Brock's like, hey, what the fuck's going on? Fair enough. Let's say Brock's pretty astute. Okay. He does that. That's fair. And then from there, Tyr turns around, or Odin, turns around and stabs him with a knife. What kind of knife? Is it a special Asgardian knife? Is it an enchanted knife? It's probably just a kitchen table knife. But let's say it is a special knife. You have Brock, who is probably wearing some of the best armor he's ever created. Or some really durable armor. He takes a, uh, a knife wound here, and then he dies. And it's like, what happened to this master craftsman? Not only that, it's the kitchen knife. Yeah, so Brock got stabbed by a kitchen knife. So not only that, but Brock has been on adventures with us, you know, fighting all sorts of creatures, tatzel worms, and, and horrifying things. Things that are much scarier than kitchen knives. Yet Odin just takes a kitchen knife, stabs Brock, and then Brock dies. Okay, that's, like, what the hell happened there. And then from there, Odin, or Tyr, takes Atreus hostage. Okay. So, there's a lot of situations where Atreus is strong, and there's a lot of situations where Atreus is weak. Either way, he's holding the kitchen knife to Atreus's neck. Fine, he decides to take a hostage. But as Odin flees, he does not take Atreus with him. I don't think he can because you have to go willingly by Raven. Instead, Kratos attacks the mask and, and sticks it to the wall. And Odin leaves. And Odin can't come back anymore. So already there are so many flaws with Odin's character there because he's like this scheming mastermind, amazing at what he does. So deceptive that he's deceived everybody. They're like, we're warning you, Atreus. Don't be deceived by Odin because we all were. Yet when he is going to find the thing that is most important to him in the world at this point, he comes with no plan and is an impromptu, half-assed, hostage situation. Not only that, but when Atreus had the mask, Odin didn't take it from him. Atreus kept holding on to it. So a little bit weird there. Okay, so that's already a big problem with Odin's character. Okay. Next is what happens with Kratos and Atreus. So as soon as Brock dies, Freya tries to help him. She can't. Uh, I'm pretty sure he's not dead, though. But as soon as Brock dies, Kratos is like, we're leaving. Here's Galahorn. Here's this. Let's go. And they run away for all of 10 fucking minutes. They leave. They go through the realm door. They go back to their home. And this is also especially dangerous because what do we know? Well, we know that Odin can pretty much go wherever he wants, and he has eyes everywhere. For example, when Atreus completed the mask, Odin appeared instantly, instantly with them. And assuming he had a raven with them, fine, let's say he had a raven with them. We also know that he has a raven, Hugin, at Kratos' house. Okay, so Odin is very well, or should be very well aware, that Kratos and Atreus are there. We also know that Thor wants to fuck up Atreus. So wouldn't that be the perfect opportunity for Odin and Thor to go fuck up Kratos and Atreus, especially since Thor fucked up Kratos earlier? Shouldn't that be? Well, you would think it would be, and you would think Kratos would know that, and you would think he would know that they are actually safe in Sindri's house because because Odin can't go back there, apparently. Uh, Halo, thanks for the 16 months, man. Thank you. So you would think that, but he doesn't. Instead, they decide to go hunting. The hunting part is a callback. Okay, we have to calm our minds down. We just lost Brock. Fine. That can, that can be jam-packed in there, and that can be okay. And then Kratos is like, no, we must confront our shit, which is like, all right. Also a little bit weird, but let's go back. Actually, let's not go back. Let's go find Sindri. Where are we going to find Sindri? Okay, we find him at this place here. Okay. He's like, hey, fuck you. I hate you. And it's like, Sindri, that's fair enough. Like, the emotional scene be between Sindri and, and them, fair enough. Uh, Atreus wasn't very convincing because he's like, what can we do? Uh, but okay, fine. And then they go back to Sindri's house, hoping to God that Freya and Freya are still there, which they are. And they're like, we're going to join up with you. And they're like, okay, cool. And then Freyr's like, I'm going to go raise all the elves. <laughs> I'm going to unite them, and we're going to attack Asgard. And it's like, 
what on earth is going on? Why are we attacking Asgard? The whole idea was we wanted to avoid Ragnarok. Why did we want to avoid Ragnarok? Because we didn't want the prophecy to come true. So not only does Atreus not want Kratos dead, he knows if, that, if we go through with Ragnarok, Kratos is dead. Kratos doesn't want to die. He also does not want to have war with Ragnarok. The only person who really wants war with Ragnarok is Freya, and by extension, um, Freyr. And it's like, okay, well, why are we attacking Ragnarok? We don't even need to attack Ragnarok. Oh, but Odin will come for us no matter what until until he gets what he wants. Okay, so then give him the mask. Like, from what they know is they don't need it. They don't need the mask or anything. They don't even know what the mask does. In fact, Kratos is very cautious about the mask, and he's like, there are no shortcuts to this. There's no shortcuts. There's a bunch of knowledge there. There's no fucking shortcuts. You don't want to pay the price. So, this mask, they could easily just give it to Odin. They don't need it. They don't want it. Um... And Odin, theoretically, from there, would leave them alone. That's what he needed Atreus for, right? Uh, but they don't do that, nor do they recognize that or realize that. Instead, they're like, we're going to start Ragnarok. And it's like, not only did we say we shouldn't start Ragnarok, but we don't have a reason to start Ragnarok. We're just going to go and fuck up Odin now for whatever reason. And the reason is because the game needs a big battle as a conclusion, even though it doesn't make any sense. So that's where I'm like, okay, the writing is off. Oh, and last thing about this as well. Freyr's like, oh, I'm going to go and unite all the elves. So Odin can freely travel to Alfheim. And Freyr's going alone. And Frere is not a match for anybody. Frere has not fucked up anybody. He's just gotten fucked up. So there is nothing stopping Frere from getting absolutely sniped and demolished by Odin or Thor or even th the fat little daughter. There's nothing. Yet, he's like, I'm going to go do it anyway. Don't worry. I can, I can be relied on. It's like, uh, what are you... How, what? <laughs> I don't get the MCU. Uh, the speeches. So an easy one is the speeches. Like right before they go in and into Asgard to fight, they give a speech. Kratos gives a speech. And then Freya gives a speech. And then Atreus gives a speech. And then Freyr says something. And they're kind of talking to nobody, but they're talking to each other. And the three extra Valkyries that are just there, they're our army now. Uh, that was a very weird and forced thing. And that was something they threw in there because it felt... Like, oh, we need to put this in here now. Otherwise, there's nothing there. You know, that's, that's the, that's, that's an easy point to the Marvel. Or what they do with, did with Sindri. Sindri is so angry now. Speeches before war is fine. Of course it's fine. It just doesn't fit the characters. I'm not saying it's, it's a bad, it's wrong. I'm not saying it's a wrong thing. It just doesn't fit. What on earth made Kratos give a speech? Like, Kratos is... That's not his character. Kratos isn't a speech character. That's not what he does. Most of the game, he just fucking grunts. In fact, with Faye, it was all grunts. And then he opened up a little bit, but he still just grunts. And then all of a sudden, we're going to war. Okay, let me give a speech. No, that was a forced event. That wouldn't organically happen with the characters, I don't think. Yeah, it's also that's true. It's not a war. He learned how to talk from raising Atre Atreus. See, there's a again. It's it's a it's a let me find a reason for this to work. That again, that reason doesn't work. It's not within his character. Kratos isn't just like softest dad in the world or Superman. Now he's not. He's that's not who he is. People change. Yeah, sure. Do they change in in like two seconds? No, they don't. It could be over a couple games that that happened or over the entire story that that happened but there wasn't nearly enough change for that to happen it's like saying <laughs> it's like me doing something completely ridiculous right now and uh, people are like what the hell what's wrong like for us just for us just ate like fucking for a month straight, he just ate 4,000 calories a day and gained 200 pounds. And then I look at the camera and I say, people change. It's like, that doesn't make sense. 
Like, you know, it, it doesn't work. Freya just gives a speech after, then Atreus, then, uh, then Frere. And who are they giving speeches to? It's still forced. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. You want it to make sense, but you got to be honest. Like, hey, it wasn't, it wasn't well thought out. It wasn't well written. They didn't do a good job. You know? Like, what people are doing right now with, with, when I criticize the game, they say, oh, yeah, but this and that, so it makes sense. It's like, okay, I'll give you an example. Okay. Superman can fly. And then at some point in the new movie that comes out, Superman dies because he, uh, he falls off a cliff and he hits the ground. And then I say, he shouldn't have died, he can fly. That doesn't make any sense. And then what you say is, oh, well, it makes sense because there was some kryptonite, like, a planet away, and uh, someone shone a light on it that magnified it to his exact position, and he lost his power of flight. And it's like, okay, but even if he lost his power of flight, he's Superman. Like, he doesn't... He's been thrown through planets before he doesn't just die uh no no it was it was the kryptonite like that's that's how it works it's like okay sure technically that makes sense but it's it's such a reach that it's like why like why can't you just say they should have came up with a more creative way to kill him this is why games come out the way they do the majority justify the flaws and the creators don't need don't see a need to change the formula because the majority is okay with it it's like yeah. So maybe instead of pouring money into accessibility options that don't work and instead of pouring money into backseating characters and assuming your audience is an idiot or sorry, assuming your audience members are idiots, maybe they could just do a better job with the story. Like that would have been good. Like that's, that's a sad thing about this game. And that's what God of War represents now. Like, that's what I see God of War as. Not like, wow, a really cool rendition of Kratos, a really cool rendition of his son, and and other characters like Freya and Balder in a very lush, vibrant world that's packed with all sorts of things and great combat and stuff like that. Now I see it as a wasted opportunity. Whatever happened to our, our boat that Freya gave us that we just decided never to use again? I don't know why we didn't use that to like fly around Vanaheim. Oh, the light elves. Like there's another thing in there too, which I, I realized early on. It's like the light elves and the dark elves are fighting. And it's like, we save the light elves. Why are the light elves attacking us? I didn't understand that. And then people are like, oh, they're at war. They want to fuck you up. It's like, okay. Frere was a total waste. Yeah, Frere, Frere did seem like a waste. And they made Frere, they like alternated between Frere being like super strong and then Frere being pathetic and weak. And then they're like, I'm going to unite the elves. And it's like, but can't Odin just come and fuck you up? The twist elevated Odin's character to me. Yeah, it was cool that he was tear all along, but then they did it badly. Oh, he was tear all along and he deceived everybody for the whole fucking game and he could not get the mask back. Uh, he tried to do so with a half-assed, half-baked amateur plan where he just, I'm Tyr, I'm going to fight, let's cause Ragnarok. And then the whole Ragnarok thing, too. At one point in the game, they're just like, we really don't want to do Ragnarok. We really don't want to do Ragnarok. Let's not kill Heimdall. Let's not do this. We don't want to do Ragnarok. Okay, let's do Ragnarok. It's the only way. The jump there was like, that's a huge fucking jump. What did he die for? Ragnarok? Or Ragnarok was on... Yeah, that's another thing. Like, why did Freyr even die? Ragnarok was on there. Why did we even need Ragnarok? We didn't. Like, we did not need Ragnarok. We just came in and fucked up Odin and Thor. And then Ragnarok comes and kills Freyr. <laughs> okay, cool. He destroyed Asgard as he was meant to. Yeah, but we didn't need him to destroy Asgard. We, we did not need him to. He could have... You know, like, we could have just sent him in to destroy Asgard and then not gone in. What's Kratos going to do after this? Like, at this point, I don't care. That's the thing. See, it's like, now I don't care about the sequels, if there are any sequels. When God of War 1 was done, I was excited for God of War 2. 
I was. Now God of War 2 is done. I don't care about God of War 3 because look at what they did to God of War 2. Why is it going to be any better what they do to God of War 3? Why won't they just make another Marvel movie? They'll reel you in with some good writing and then they'll just let it go because they don't have to anymore. They don't have to pay for it. They can just fucking pay for accessibility settings instead. There was no point in summoning Cert slash Ragnarok. There was zero point. Didn't need to be done. I doubt we even needed the army of elves. And of course, Sindri didn't bring an army of dwarves. He just brought himself and fucked everybody up because apparently Sindri and Brock aren't weak, but they are because Brock got stabbed by a kitchen knife and died. Yeah, it was really weird. And the whole grandma fight, the Angra Boda grandma fight, that was weird too. Should have been a trilogy, a less story, more good sized stuff in this. Yeah, like, hey, I like the crater. Take away the crater, make the story better. I like the crater. Okay, you know what else I liked? I liked all sorts of things. I liked the combat. I like all sorts of things. You know what else? You could take away the back seating. Instead of spending resources on back seating and, and, and treating your, your game players like idiots, improve the story, improve the writing, make it a little bit longer. Okay, what else did I like? There's a lot of things I liked. We went to Helheim once. That was cool. What was going on with Race Velgar? Maybe expand over there. Maybe show the section where Mimir goes and talks for to Horace Velgar or something like that. Like, why, why not just, you know? Yeah, there's another, another good thing. Garm wasn't used at all, right? Fenrir, Garm was not used at all. He just became Angra Boda's pet. It's like, what the hell was that? Like, I thought that would be really cool. And then it's just like, Atreus is like, okay, later. He saved them at the end, wouldn't say he wasn't used. He wasn't really used. Like, they just needed to give him, like, a cameo. It's just the same thing with Sindri. It's like, yeah, Sindri was there. Cool, Garm was there. Angraboda was there for whatever reason. You know, it's like, okay. I'm, I'm saddened and disappointed by this game. I like it. I still like it, and I'm going to keep playing it because I like it. But it's like, it's like having... It's like really looking forward to something. And someone just coming and slapping that delicious food right out of your hand. It's just a sad thing. It's like it's like a it's like seeing a, a promising athlete suffer a, a permanent injury. That's what it, it feels like. Like, you guys all like soccer or football or whatever. Imagine if you, you have your favorite athlete and one of them just lost a leg. And then it's, it's like the saddest thing in the world. And everybody else is like, no, it's fine. 